right so today we are learning about uh, basic stuff on ionic compounds ionic compounds are made from positive cations and negative a charge and ions so ionic compounds are made from oppositely charged ions cation and anions anions are negatively charged and cations are positively charged and these cations are formed from metals and anions are formed from non-metals okay so generally ionic compounds are formed between metals and non-metals by transfer of electrons so we have to remember this transfer of electrons ionic bonding involves transfer of electrons so let's talk about the forces that keeps these ions together so plus and then minus there is something that keeps them together and that bond is called ionic bond another name of ionic bond is electrovalent bond right now how these ions are bond and the type of forces that keeps the atoms together what are the what are those forces so once again the bonds that are keeping them together are ionic bond and how are these bonds formed So we need to know that as well. So this ionic bond is the result of electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. So it's a result of the attraction between the oppositely charged ions and this is also called electrostatic attraction electrostatic attraction and why are we saying electrostatic attraction we are dealing with the charges we are dealing with the electrons we are dealing with the protons here so these force can also be described as we can call them electro static force or Coulomb's force and that has to do with the charges now when you show the atom like two atoms bonded together generally as a model we show them as a plus like a let's say this is a plus or we can say this is a positive ion or a metallic ion and then we draw this solid straight bar and we connect those atoms or the ions with each other now this is the simplest way to show but and you see this is like a solid straight bar however so this is just a model when we show them these molecules the atoms the ions or the compounds and here we are talking about ionic compounds here this one is a metal this was is a non-metal non-metallic ion we show them when we draw the model with the solid straight bar however in reality actually the bonds are really flexible okay they are not that rigid these bonds are actual bonds are more flexible more flexible and these bonds can bend and stretch without breaking okay 
So models are for quick and easy representation, but again, they have their limitations. So it's, this one is easier, quicker to draw and represents like the easy representation. Okay. Now let's take, I'm going to explain this ionic bonding with the, the simplest and the most widely used example, the salt that we all use every day and most probably you eat it every day and it's widely used and it's the most common salt called table salt. Well, this table salt, the chemical name is sodium chloride. And we're going to say that we're going to use this chemical name sodium chloride instead of saying table salt because all ionic compounds, all ionic compounds are actually the salts. They are all salts. So instead of saying salts, I'm going to say sodium chloride. That's the chemical name. Let's work on the formation. Sodium, we know that it is uh, 11 electrons. It has 11 electrons. You can actually refer to your periodic table if you have forgotten. Sodium, 11 electrons. And we are making a compound between sodium and chlorine. And here chlorine belongs to group 7. And it, it is group 7. It has 7 valence electrons, but total electrons are 17. So when we have to show the shells, in the center is the nucleus and show the electron distri distribution to, okay. So it is two, eight, one. Okay, and we have chlorine two, eight, and seven. So it is two, eight, and seven. So here you have one valence electron and here you have seven valence electrons. So the valence electron is going to be transferred to the valence shell of chlorine because all it needs is one electron to have the electron configuration of its nearest noble gas. Now once sodium atom, so you have a sodium atom and you have a chlorine atom here. Now, once the sodium atom loses one electron, now it is left with how many electrons? Only 10. So it is 2 and this is 8 and the outermost electrons are 8 after it is complete. Now here, how about the electrons here? We have 2, 8 and here. 2 here, 8 here, so 2, 8 and 8. Here the outermost shell is complete. So it's complete for both. Before it was 7 here, now it is 8. Before it, uh, it was 1 electron in the outermost shell and now in the outermost shell it is 8 electrons. Now we don't even need the outermost shell in case of sodium because that electron is no more there. Now this is sodium and chloride ion right and they are making a compound sodium chloride they have different properties here very different properties from each other now so this ionic compound how is it formed ionic compound is formed by transfer transfer of electron from a metal to a non-metal neutral metal atom to a neutral non-metal atom and once the ions are formed they combine together, they stay stick to each other by ionic bond. Okay, so if you are asked how are the compounds formed, you are going to say ionic compounds are formed by the transfer of electrons. Just remember for ionic, ionic compounds, the key word is the transfer because when we discuss other compounds, it will be different. Now, before we move on, 
let's check for understanding so let's see if you're actually getting it remember i said from metallic ion to non-metallic ion electrons are transferred so electron transfer from metallic ion metals neutral metal atom to neutral non-metal atom all right how do you tell from the periodic table which side is metallic which side is non-metallic here is the stair step you know that already all these elements on the right side of stair step we consider these non-metals and all these metals on the left side of the stair step as metals. So metals to the left, non-metals to the right. Now you need your periodic table, so please make sure you have your periodic table. Okay, you have to explain why or why not the following pairs can form an ionic bond or you can say ionic compounds here I have already given you a hint transfer of electron from metal to non-metal so you're going to predict the kind of charge whether the charge is plus or minus or maybe zero charge all right and for that you can use your periodic table you are going to look at the stair step it's pretty simple so you have to see whether you're looking at the left or at the right potassium and chlorine so now you tell me where is potassium potassium is right here it's a metal it's on the left side of stair step chlorine is on the right side and it is a non-metal okay so potassium is a metal let me use another potassium is a metal chlorine is a non-metal okay now carbon you said it's a non-metal yes you're right and in fact it's a metalloid as well it can lose four electrons or it can gain four electrons so carbon actually is here it's a non-metal and bromine non-metal okay magnesium you said it's a metal right nitrogen you said it's a non-metal potassium you said it's a metal and neon you said it is a noble gas sodium you said it is a metal and lithium is a metal as well okay so potassium is a metal it's going to form positive ion chlorine is a non-metal it's going to form a negative ion now what what have what have we learned so far that for ionic compounds we need metallic ion and non-metallic ion we need a cation and we need an anion so this one will be yes carbon is a non-metal and so is bromine so they both are non-metal all right so negative negative here answer is no since they both are non-metals so if we need somebody, we need a metal to lose electrons and we need a non-metal to gain electrons. Magnesium here is a metal, positively charged, non-metal, negatively charged. So yes, it is going to form a compound, ionic bond, ionic compound. Potassium is a metal, positive ion. Well, neon is a noble gas, so its octet is complete. All right so if it is if its octet is complete that means it does not need any electrons neither gain nor law nor loss so this is no sodium is a metal lithium is a metal they both are metal so sodium can lose electron become positive ion but it needs someone to gain its electron but here we have a lithium and lithium is again a metal so metal and metal again no Okay, so that was the quick check. All right. Okay, so let's keep the same example. I'm not changing the example. We have to 
learn how the transfer of electron happens so here sodium is transferring electrons to chlorine atom electron transfer okay now when sodium loses an electron it becomes a positive ion and chlorine when it gains the electron it becomes negative ion now here comes two important terms when the electron is removed from sodium we need some energy okay and that energy is called ionization energy so i'm going to do the chart like this so here removing or removal of valence electron ve removal of valence electron from a neutral atom needs energy and what is this energy called this energy is called ionization energy okay so what is ionization energy once again so what is an ionization energy ionization energy is the energy required to remove the valence electron from an atom just like this one so when the valence electron was removed the energy was required that's called ionization energy and here when chlorine is accepting electron what happens then so when an electron is added onto a neutral atom there is a change in energy or we can say there is release in energy and this is called electron affinity so what is electron affinity electron affinity is the amount of energy it's the amount of energy which is released or change in energy that occurs when electron is added onto a neutral atom so we need to know these two vocabulary words let's continue So when sodium is reacting with chlorine, which is a gas, sodium chloride is formed. There is a release of energy. So sodium chloride is formed from sodium atom and chlorine atoms. However, the properties of these elements are entirely different these individual elements is very different from these elements when they are together as a compound so properties of the elements which are making up the atoms so you, the atoms making up the compound they are still so here sodium and chlorine they are here sodium and chlorine are here so same atoms on both sides even though the atoms are same on both sides their properties are very different just because this is a compound it's entirely new substance. This is the sodium chloride is neither sodium and nor chlorine. This is uh, um, sodium is silvery, grayish in color. It's a soft metal and it's extremely explosive. And chlorine is yellowish green gas. And sodium chloride is white crystalline solid it's a white crystalline solid and during this process tremendous energy is produced 
see this i have written the word energy on the right side with the products because the overall process of formation of sodium chloride from sodium and chlorine is exothermic so it is exothermic reaction overall overall it's an exothermic reaction but we need to understand that this does not happen in one step this for especially for making sodium chloride it's a five step process those start those steps they may not be in a particular sequence but it's there are intermediate steps and it doesn't happen in one step so during those intermediate steps intermediate steps they include both absorption as well as release of energy so absorption is endo and release is exo however overall reaction is exothermic So there is energy released when ionic salt is formed and this energy is called lattice energy. So what's happening we have sodium ion and we have chloride ion and it forms sodium chloride. During this process energy is released so minus energy. So this energy which is released, let me write a definition, energy released when an ionic compound or you can say salt as I told you that ionic compounds are also called salts, all ionic compounds are salts, when an ionic compound or salt is formed from its gaseous ions. then it is called lattice energy. Energy released when an ionic compound is formed from gaseous ions is called lattice energy. Okay, how about the other way? How about if it is opposite? So, sodium chloride, let's say you have the same compound, let's keep the same example, sodium chloride solid and it is broken down into its individual ions and during this process lot of energy is added plus energy so this energy required to separate a mole of ionic compound remember it has to be solid mole of ionic compound into as the letter stand this letter stands for solid into gaseous ions G is called lattice energy as well all right so lattice energy is both ways it's an energy release when an ionic compound or ionic salt is formed from gaseous ions and also this is an energy required to separate a mole of ionic compound into gaseous ions so you have here sodium chloride breaking into gaseous ions and here these gaseous ions combining together to form solid sodium chloride in both cases the energy released here and here in this case energy required they both are called lattice energy so i'm going to explain about the factors that affect lattice energy 
in my another video. Now here let's talk about the structure of sodium chloride. Here you can see you have well in the middle this is the sodium ion and the four this sodium ion is surrounded by one, two, three, four, five, six surrounded by six chloride ions and here you have chloride ion here in the middle that's what it is shown I'm showing it to you separately for better understanding you have one two three four five and six sodium ions so here six chloride ions and here you have six sodium ions so six chloride ions are surrounded by one sodium ion and sorry one sodium ion is surrounded by six chloride ions and here one chloride ion is surrounded by six sodium ions so you can see it is a network of sodium and chloride ions we are talking about the stru structure the crystalline structure crystal lattice crystalline structure crystal lattice of sodium chloride so it's a network of sodium and chloride ions all right it's not a molecule it is not a molecule you don't we don't see any clusters we don't see any clumps we actually see the individual atoms the individual ions well we know that like charges like charges repel each other all right and unlike charges so since here we have positive as well as negative sodium is positive and chlorine chloride ions are negative sodium ions are positive so so we have both in sodium chloride we have positive and negative both kinds of ions so there are both forces, there are, there are repulsive, repulsion forces and as well as attractive forces. And we know according to the law of electrostatic electricity, so these are like charges repelling. And if it is unlike charges, attracting. Okay, I can make it bigger. unlike charge they attract and like charges repel each other so here what is happening here is in this case in sodium chloride attractive forces the attraction between the sodium and chloride ions is much greater than repulsion between the like charges so attraction between plus and minus is much greater it is significantly greater than repulsion repulsion between the like charges between the plus plus and minus minus and as a result what happens there is a very strong attraction between the oppositely charged ion so that results in the strong attraction between the oppositely charged ions as we said that plus and minus they attract and what happens it also results since there is a strong attraction what happens as a result of strong attraction of oppositely charged ions is arrangement of ions in repeating units And these repeating units form a crystal lattice. Form a crystal lattice. Repeating units. Okay. And the unit cell.
is the simplest repeating unit of a crystal structure of a crystal structure so for today we are going to learn only this much and in my next slide I'm going to cover about the lattice energy I'm going to talk about the coulombs and my next video will also be learning about uh, coulombs law and the properties of ionic compounds the hardness why is it brittle why are ionic compounds brittle when do they conduct electricity and when do they not conduct electricity we'll be talking about all those properties as well okay so make sure wherever there is a difficulty make sure please you pause it try to listen to me again and we're going to discuss more in class bye thank you